First of all, I want to thank you for purchasing this DVD of a historic event called Arise America, A Marriage to Remember, the 400th anniversary of Pocahontas and John Rolfe's wedding. I had the blessing of being the master of ceremonies for this event and also a very, very integral part of the Arise America movement along with my sister in the Lord, Chief Ann Richardson of the Rappahannock Tribe and Rabbi Eric Carlson of Congregation Zion's sake. Those of you who watch this might have a question to start with and that is, what is Arise America? Well, that's a great question. But do you know, as many times as that question has been asked to individuals that have actually experienced one of the multiple Arise America gatherings, we get different answers. We believe it's a profound movement in America to build bridges of trust and love. And when different groups culturally get together, love God through the love of Jesus Christ, which we all do, an amazing thing takes place. The presence of God comes into a room that gives the ability supernaturally to heal wounds of the past. We have many, many wounds in America, going back to the really the settlement of Jamestown. And We have many, many wounds in America, going back to the really the settlement of Jamestown and some of the differences between the indigenous and the English. My question has always been, can I, a living descendant of an English settler called John Johnson back in that time frame, who owned farms and actually slaves, can I do something about what in God's sight must have been wrong for my descendant, or not descendant, but ancestor, to have owned slaves? Well, my answer to that question to God was an affirmative yes, you can do something now. So about 15 years ago, we began this venture called Arise America, the power of one, in which I went back into the time frame of the 1607 colonists coming to America and started to try to unveil some of the wrongs done between the people groups. And then got the people groups to come back together, those who love Christ with all their hearts, and to try to do something about some of the wrongs of the past, to build bridges of trust with the indigenous, trust with the Jewish, trust with the African. African Americans still today deal with issues based on racism. So do the indigenous. So do the Messianic Jewish populace of America. So can we do something about it? Can we pull together? Can we lock arms, so to speak, to make a difference? Well, I truly believe the answer is yes. Take us to make us your song, the broken songs of our broken people. Take us, make us your song. As you watch this DVD, or even see parts of this movement called Arise America, we certainly hope that it will provoke you to a place of action, trying to build relationships with indigenous or Jewish African or even English people around you in your communities because I truly believe in this end time before Christ comes back for his bride 
There's something that has to take place according to the word, that every wrinkle, every blemish shall be wiped away. And I believe what that means is that a great healing revival has to take place across this nation. A inner healing of wounds from even years past where people are struggling even today because of the problems of the past. Whether you're indigenous, whether you're Jewish, whether you're an African American, somehow, some way, these issues continue to surface today. Can we do something? Yes, we can. Get on board with the Rise America. Become a part of the solution, not someone who continues to talk about the problem. And I truly believe America will see the third great awakening, one in which thousands upon hundreds of thousands will truly witness and experience the love of God, the love of Yeshua, the love of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Shalom. My name is Barb Carlson. I am the leader of the, our Israeli dance team from Congregation Zion's sake. Before we minister, I just want to take a moment to explain uh, why we do what we do. We are dressed in white to represent the wedding, the wedding feast, under the chuppah, which is God's cov covenant and also his covering. We're each wearing a different color representing the nations. The song that we're singing, going to be dancing to is called Adomai Vashomayim, which is all sung in Hebrew, but it has a Native American flair to it, which brings the two cultures together because we are Mishpoka, we are family in Yeshua, our Messiah. And the words simply mean the creator of the heavens and the sky, we feel your spirit in our bodies and in our souls, and we sing, Heya, Heya, Ho, worship with us.
Hallelujah. Let's give him another good hand of applause. From the historic Kimball Theater in beautiful Williamsburg, Virginia, and on behalf of Jamestown Christian Fellowship and all the people that it took to put this together, just want to greet you tonight and let you know how much we appreciate the fact that you are here to witness Arise America, a marriage to remember. We want to first thank the technical crew here at the Kimball for making it possible that right now as we speak, we are live streaming through YouTube, through the World Wide Web. So we will be able to be a witness, hopefully to the world, to every nation, every tribe, and every tongue. Amen? My first assignment, amen. Welcome, viewers on the internet. My first assignment tonight is a blessing, and that is to ask Chief Ann Richardson of the Rappahannock Tribe to welcome us and to bless our gathering. This is called Territorial Protocol, and what that means is that we're asking a First Nations chief from Virginia to first give us permission to have this in their territory and ask for her blessing. So now, it's our guest of honor, and I really, really want you to honor this lady. This woman is an amazing woman of God. I'd like you to stand and please honor Chief Ann Richardson of the Rappahannock Tribe as she comes forward for our territorial welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Please be seated. I welcome you to this gate. All of my brothers and sisters from around the country that have come in for this marvelous celebration, I welcome you to the Eastern Gate. And I thank you for being here. And yes, you have my permission to be here, for you are invited guest. And I honor you for being here. I am honored as the gatekeeper to have you here walking upon our land, to receive the ancient anointings that have been imparted to you today as you have walked the ground. And I bless you in your coming. And now let us pray and give Yeshua his honor. Yeshua, we love you. And we honor you with all that is within us. And we thank you for the marvelous things that you are doing in the earth right now and that you are using humble people like us to do it. We thank you, Lord, for gathering us together, for bringing in the exiles that have been scattered to the four winds. And, Father, we ask that you bless all that we do here for the glorification of your name and for your sake, Lord. The only reason that we are doing any of this is to glorify you in all the earth. And Father, we just ask that you will bless that which we do. You will lead and guide us in the way that we should do it. And we just give you all the praise, honor, and glory for it. In the name of Yeshua HaMashiach, amen and amen. Thank you, Chief Ann. And now I'd like for Rabbi Eric Carlson from Congregation Zion's sake to come forward and to bring us another prayer and give us a greater understanding of the hoopah and why it's on the stage. Uh, would you please give a round of applause for Rabbi Eric Carlson. Shalom. Praise God. We are gathered here this evening to commemorate a past wedding between two empires and two nations 400 years ago this day. But we're also here to prophetically rehearse and decree a future wedding that is yet to come. The bridal canopy or chuppah is a multifaceted symbol and it symbolizes the presence of God and the intimacy of the bridal chamber. Yeshua's return is marked by a wedding celebration where he, the groom, returns for us the body of Messiah, the bride. 
This is a re rehearsed every year through the celebration of the fall feast of Sukkot or Tabernacles. The chuppah and sukkah are almost identical. They represent that wedding's bridal chamber for both Jew and Gentile alike, as modeled through the Gentile Ruth, who cleaved herself to Israel, representing the Gentile relationship model. In Ruth 1, starting at verse 16, it says, But Ruth said, Don't press me to leave you and stop following you. For wherever you go, I will go. And wherever you stay, I will stay. Your people shall be my people, and your God will be my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May Adonai bring terrible curses on me and worse ones as well, if anything but death separates you and me. When Ruth came to Boaz, a Jew at the threshing floor, in Ruth 3, verse 8, it says, In the middle of the night, the man was startled and turned over, and there was a woman lying at his feet. He asked, Who are you? And she answered, I'm your handmaid, Ruth. And spread your robe, the talit, the canopy, over your handmaid, because you are a redeeming kinsman. And their grandson, King David. This hoopah represents our kinsman redeemer, Yeshua. It represents our covenant relationship as Jew and Gentile, as one in Messiah, through his son, our redeemer. Avino Hashamim, as we come and gather here before you this evening, we ask that you bless both bridegroom and bride. We ask your presence here as we pray that there's an open portal over this as you, O oh God, enjoy this unity together as one. We are bound together by the cords of a rope that's been sinewed together by the blood of our Messiah. May we as one glorify and honor you this evening. Hashem Yeshua HaMashiach, in the name of Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, our Redeemer. Amen and amen. Thank you, Rabbi. And now what we will do is something called protocol. If you've ever had the blessing of being around a powwow or being around any kind of reservation, and you've been honored to come on to that reservation, there's something that takes place called gifting. And this is out of their hearts. They figure something to bless the visitor with. And in return, the visitor blesses the indigenous chief or person. It's a blessing. It is a wonderful blessing to see this with multiple people. And tonight, we're going to protocol Chief Ann to thank her as the First Nations tribal leader here with gifts, Rabbi and myself to thank her so much for her time and her effort and everything she does around the world to bring forth unity in the body of Christ. So at this time, Rabbi and I, we are going to exchange gifts with our wonderful sister here. This is not my land, and it's not the place of my people. But it's an honor to have Chief Ann allow me to be here and to minister the good news in her territory. But as her, the Eastern Gatekeeper, I wish to give to her a very ancient key, which is the gate to my people, to the city of Jerusalem. And we say to you this day <laughs> that our people are one, that all that I have, all heirs, all of the kingdom of God or yours today, as this now connects the holy city of Jerusalem to this the Eastern Gate of America. I hope all of you have had an opportunity in your lifetime to encounter the living God, to really feel his presence fill a room. So for the next 10 minutes, I asked a good friend of mine from Washington, D.C., Brandon Polk, uh, if he would come and just worship for about 10 minutes. You can close your eyes, you can keep your eyes open. But what we want to do in this room is to believe that the presence of God can fill it. To know that some of you came in with some challenges. Some of you are praying for some miracles. Some of you got maybe some bad uh, reports that someone is hurting out in your family. And you just need a miracle. Well, we serve a miracle, God. And tonight what we want to do is we want to take this moment, this 10 minutes, just as we did at the beginning, is to worship the living God. And to believe that no matter how big your problem is, we serve a bigger God. 
that no matter what you need in your lifetime, we serve Jehovah Jireh, the one who provides. So if you just want to close your eyes, there's someone that really needs to be touched, including yourself. Whether it's through your heart being healed through a broken relationship, whether it's like some of our indigenous friends who are just trying to feel accepted in their own regions, tonight is going to change things. And so just close your eyes and think of somebody that really needs help. I don't know if you're a Christian, don't know if you're a Jew, don't know if you believe or you don't believe. But what we're truly believing for is there is a God. And we're believing for that God to make a big move tonight in this building. We're believing for something to shift in this region because we are here as one in Christ Jesus. So Brandon, lead us in, brother. Lead us in. You know, the word says in Revelation that it is every tribe and tongue and peoples and nation. And we are going to have to learn to walk that out in the kingdom of God here and now so that we can worship together. The word says, arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. That is not something for the by and by, but for the here and now. We are to arise and shine, but not as one people or another, but as God's people joined together. We have to learn to re recover those things that have been lost because of covenants and treaties that have been broken, because God's people are coming together for a great end time movement. We're believing right here from the root of America, right here, the womb of the nation where the United States of America was born, we are believing for a third great awakening Awakening, and we are doing the part that God has given us. Our mandate as a people has been, you lift up my body and I'll take care of your ministry. And that's the course we're on. We are lifting up the body of Christ that we might come together as one to see the glory of the Lord spread across this nation. Coming together to declare that Jesus Christ is Lord. She paid for me, I know. Oh, I feel it on the inside of me. I feel it on the inside. The Lord has been telling me about the ancient DNA, not only of people, but of the land, the very land that we walk on. And as our DNA aligns with the DNA that he has placed and the anointings that he has placed in the ground, that we walk on. There are ancient portals and wells um, and sacred places. And the First Nations people knew about those sacred places and have always known about them. Uh, he is calling us again as uh, indigenous people of the land to stand firm, to heal the land. And he's promised us in his word that if those who are called by his name will humble themselves and pray and turn from their wicked ways, then only will he hear from heaven and he will heal our land and forgive our sin. And that's what's happening right now. We are coming full circle with the ancient DNA of the land, um, with Israel, the ancient DNA of our country that was here long before Christopher Columbus or anyone else. And even as we had the Arise America event this past weekend, it was, um, of all about Pocahontas and the first covenant that was struck here between the Powhatans and the English. And it was a covenant of marriage. It was a covenant of love, releasing the Father's love over this land. And once again, Pocahontas was called to save a nation. We didn't even understand really when it, we read the history about what the fullness of what she was really called to do, but God called her as an Esther. She was called as an Esther to save a nation that would grow up and affirm Israel and complete the destiny of nations all over the world. Again, he's calling the indigenous people who have a spiritual authority over the land that he gave them to save the United States of America once again from the hands of the enemy. 
He's calling us and reconnecting our DNA. As we come from our lands and we gather together, we bring the ancient anointings of our land in us because we are made of that land. We are dirt and we possess the DNA that God has placed in us before the foundation of the world. And as the foundations of, these, uh, of the United States, the pillars get restored through um, the healing and redemption of, uh, that goes forth with communion and the salt covenants of cleansing and healing the land by the First Nations people and their gifts and anointings that he has placed in them are released in the earth like the war cry which has gone forth as a major new sound that is cutting through and breaking off demonic forces over our people. He's gathering us together those who have ears to hear and eyes to see what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to His people, the Bride. And I believe it is through the work of the First Nations people that will actually save this nation and restore it because we are in the hour of restoration. And these tribes are its in a time when God is releasing the inheritance that has been lost for many generations and it's being restored to this generation. And so if you're out there in Native American country, rise up and take your place in the body of Christ. Rise up and gather together with those who have eyes to see and ears to hear, the called out ones that he's using in this end time hour because revival is about to hit the land, but it can only hit the land through the First Nations people. And you have an obligation to the, to, to the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, that God. That's the one you have the obligation to, to stand and to see your land and your people restored. And I just am so excited that we have made covenant with Israel and it's happening all over the country. It's happening in other countries, not because we're talking to each other, but because God is giving revelation to the called out ones. And I know that that's what he wants. You know why? Because he's coming full circle with the United States. Those ancient DNAs that were here before anybody else ever came. It's all coming full circle again. And we're going to Jerusalem and during the Feast of Tabernacles 2014. And God is calling for tribal leaders to come with us, to stand with us, to stand firm as warriors, to take our country back and to make covenant with God's people. And I thank you for all of your support, your prayers. And I speak a blessing over Indian country and over this nation that once again, as we turn back to the father of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, he will again bless our land and heal it. In Jesus' name, amen. Yes, you are good, God. And all is forgiven, all is forgiven. You conquered death while you bled. Jesus is Savior. Shalom, I'm Rabbi Eric Carlson, and this is a great blessing to be able to speak with you today as you are witnessing a marriage to remember. Coming from the birthplace of America, Jamestown, Virginia, where three tiny ships 407 years ago landed and two empires came together, the British Empire and the empire that was here of the First Nations people group. Chief Ann Richardson, a direct descendant of Chief Powhatan and Pocahontas, in 2006 went to England, restored that covenant relationship because the marriage between John Rolfe and Pocahontas was a complex event that happened. It was the merging together of two nations to seek peace and reconciliation between those two people groups. It's, it's hard to comprehend and understand what happened to Jamestown. People came here seeking a new beginning. There were already established and complex uh, governments and people groups here, and another people groups were brought here against their will, and all this mix is coming together at Jamestown, Virginia, the birthplace of America. And as Pastor Wade Trump, our spiritual archaeologist, has worked so diligently to bring about this spiritual awakening of what happened in that place, it's critical because Paul said in Corinthians, 
first the physical, then the spiritual. So to see the awakening of America come 407 years later after the physical foundations is according to scripture. And as Acts 17, 26 clearly tells us that God created all the lands, the boundaries, and the people therein. So knowing this, we understand that the First Nations people here today are still the spiritual authority of this land. Chief Ann Richardson, the gatekeeper here at the Eastern Gate to America, in fact, Ezekiel 43 says God's glory enters the Eastern Gate. So this is the Eastern Gate spiritually and physically of America. And to hold this event here at this, the Eastern Gate, where it started 407 years ago, is outstanding. It's nothing less than supernatural. And I believe that we're seeing the foundations of the Third Great Awakening beginning from this simple ceremony, where first we acknowledge the covenant relationship between Chief Anne and her people, the Rappahannock Nation, and England, and now see a futuristic prophetic relationship as she and the chiefs of the East Coast come together and make a Ruth stand, a covenant stand with the nation of Israel, with God's people. Your people will be my people, your God, my God, and where you go, I shall go. And in this, we see the turning of a nation back to Israel. Genesis 12, 3, God says, I'll bless those who bless you and curse those who curse you. So it's incumbent upon every nation of this earth to be a sheep nation, to stand with Israel. And we see the spiritual authority of this land turning back to that, the truth, the plumb line is being reestablished between Jamestown, the Eastern Gate of America, and Jerusalem. In fact, as you're watching this right now, you're behind me is east, and we're pointed right towards Jerusalem. Very prophetic. And we see that plumb line established between Jerusalem and America, and now we see the spiritual awakening. When revival comes to the First Nations people group, we will see the revival of America, for they are the spiritual authority. It's an extremely powerful event to see the spiritual leaders of our land humble themselves, come before God, and make this Ruth covenant with the nation of Israel. It was a great blessing in understanding that that group has now been invited to Israel to present this covenant to a special meeting of the Knesset, this very Sukkot, the year 2014. God is doing something supernatural in this day, and it's the release of the one new man, which was prayed over in this very eastern gate at Jamestown 400 years ago. The Jew and Gentile would be reconciled together as one, that the days of iniquity come to an end and God's glory be revealed on all the earth. We are in those days, and we are going to see a turning back to God. We're going to see a great awakening. We're ready to see the worldwide harvest. God bless and shalom. Tonight we first must give praise and adoration to God Almighty for allowing us the privilege of seeing with our very own eyes the manifestation of such an historical gathering of his people from many tribes, nations, and tongues. If tonight's presentation looks and feels a little like a wedding, good. We are the bride of Christ preparing for our groom's return. Represented in this auditorium are some of this country's hidden treasures also. Descendants and chiefs from the tribal nations that made first contact with the colonists that traveled from England to settle in Jamestown and Plymouth. In just a few minutes, you will be greeted by each of these tribal leaders and then have the opportunity to hear from our special guest from Pocahontas' descendant, Chief Ann Richardson of the Rappahannock Tribe. What I want you to know in this room is that we are privileged. This may never happen again with this many wonderful, honored guests that we have tonight through the indigenous tribes of America who have traveled here to be in this building, to cooperate with one another through the love of Jesus, and for us to see God's glory maybe in a different dimension. Today marks the 400th anniversary of the marriage between English settler John Rolfe and Indian princess Pocahontas. Tonight we are here to commemorate this historical marriage by hearing Chief Anne's perspective on the importance of the marriage 400 years ago, the importance of the marriage today, and her perspective on our future. 
Let me begin tonight's journey by making a simple statement of fact. God's love is bigger than any of our past mistakes created over the last 407 years of American history. We are gathered here tonight to honor the memory of a young, beautiful, brave, indigenous princess named Matoka, or better known to us as Pocahontas. As new inhabitants landed on the shoreline of the James River in May of 1607, Pocahontas somehow saw the English colonists not as her enemies, but people she could share her compassion with. To me, Pocahontas was and still is one of America's truest heroes. Pocahontas possibly looked into the eyes of those starving colonists and shared a godlike mercy with them in their toughest moments. She visited and befriended a group of people living in fear, lacking fresh water, at times living on just a few morsels of corn to survive, and far away and missing their homeland, England. In my opinion, Pocahontas, in her own right, was a living beacon of hope. She somehow brought hope to the colonists who had many concerns about their indigenous neighbors. To Pocahontas' credit, she wasn't afraid to cross cultural lines and befriend men who carried war, weapons of war, like the legendary Captain John Smith. I believe that Pocahontas did everything in her power to continue her relationship with the English, including accepting their culture, accepting their Christian faith, and being baptized and receiving a new English name, Rebecca. I believe it was Pocahontas' willingness to adapt to the English way of life that gave both the indigenous and English some sense of hope and a temporary peace between the years of 1614 and 1621. Pocahontas, without knowing the English language, didn't fear crossing unfamiliar cultural lines, and she lived with a childlike faith. She was a child on a mission of mercy. She was a princess who showed even the Christian colonist a real life example of what God's love should look like. Pocahontas' nature drew others to her. Her curiosity and childlike compassion were attractive, non-offensive, non-aggressive, and unconditional. Pocahontas built a bridge between two very different cultures with many misunderstandings. Actually, the type of love Pocahontas shared with the colonists was biblical, way before she heard the first words read out of a Bible. Her love covered a multitude of wrongs done by the English towards her own people. Now, let's fast forward 400 years till tonight. We are here at the Kimball Theater in a beautiful facility, air-conditioned, clean clothes, nice cars, and a place to call home. So why as a group of Christian and Jewish leaders assembled here tonight? Why have we gone to such extremes to organize this gathering? The answer is profound. It's love. The same heart that Pocahontas had for the settlers in the 1600s is the same love and honor we are extending to our indigenous friends tonight. What we, are, what we have learned over the past, last 15 years of gatherings just like this one is this. Together we can make history just by making efforts to build bridges of trust just like Pocahontas did 400 years ago. By example, we can show America that God's love is contagious and a heart that can love unconditionally can save a nation from destruction. God's word promises this in 2 Chronicles 7.14. It reads, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways then I, God, will hear from heaven, will forgive their sin, 